Hello students, welcome to lecture 21 of the online course on Photon Crystals Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be covering uh, applications of fiber break grating. So here is the lecture outline, we will be discussing about fiber break gratings in optical communication, different types of fiber break grating and their application mainly in filtering and multiplexing, compensation for chromatic dispersion, laser diodes fiber lasers, amplifiers and so on. Okay. We will be also discussing the applications of fiber break grating in sensors, particularly as a temperature sensor and strain sensor. So, fiber break grating as you know is a very important uh, component in optical communication and why we are uh, discussing about optical communication because that actually is the backbone of all the high speed data transmission that is happening in today's world. So, it is a very important device and uh, if you remember that this is basically a 1D periodic grating yeah? or it is a one you, you can think of you know 1D photonic crystal somewhere very close to that. Okay? So, fiber break gratings are basically made of periodic modulation of the refractive index inside the core of a single mode optical fiber. Okay? And, uh, over the past few decades, fiber break grating sensors have been uh, wi seen widespread development. What, was, what is the reason? It allows for use in compact spaces and also it shows EMI, electromagnetic interference resistance. That means they are immune to different kind of you know EMI or electromagnetic interfaces making them suitable for environments where typically electronic sensors would fail. They are also easy to install okay, and you can uh, deploy them in challenging and remote locations and they ensure reliable performance over the extended periods. Wavelength multiplexing um, that like enables multiple fiber break rating sense to be used simultaneously without any interference from one another. Okay? And uh, they also show photosensitivity. That means, you know, um, the FPGs are typically inscribed in fibers that exhibit photosensitivity, which is basically a permanent change in the refractive index of the fiber core when exposed to specific wavelengths and intensities. So, what what is the great thing about this fiber? When you actually um, send a wide spectrum of wavelengths, only one particular wavelength will get reflected. right? So, that is how it operates. So, that is the op functioning principle. So, when light from a broadband source will enter the fiber, only the wavelength that meets the Bragg reflection criteria or Bragg condition will get reflected back and other wavelengths will get passed through. So, in the transmission spectrum, you will see there is a notch and that is coming because of the strong reflection from one particular wavelength. Okay? So, if your grating period is given as uh, capital lambda, the lam small lambda is the Bragg wavelength which is getting reflected and that satisfies this particular equation 2 n lambda. We will come to this uh, details what is this uh, n and what is uh, lambda, capital lambda in more details in the subsequent slides. So, Bragg reflection basically is a selective reflection which is caused by the interaction of light with periodically modulated refractive index within the fiber. Now, periodic modulation is nothing but you know um, the periodic change in the refractive index along the fiber and what happens at each interface there will be some reflection isn't it? And uh, this periodic modulation thus results in multiple reflection of light within the fiber. So, at a particular specific wavelength, you will see that you know all the reflected light signals, they basically align in phase. So, they constructively interfere okay? and that gives you nearly 100 percent reflection and that wavelength is called as Bragg wavelength. So, Bragg wavelength is crucial for the functionality of this fiber Bragg grating dictating which wavelength will be strongly reflected as also shown here one particular wavelength is getting reflected back. Now, this is as I mentioned mainly happens at 
Bragg wavelength because of the constructive interference of different multiple reflected light from all these interfaces okay? and they add up coherently to increase the intensity of the reflected light. Now, what happens for other wavelengths that they do not satisfy this condition? So, for wavelengths which are which do not satisfy the Bragg condition that is they are not the Bragg wavelength for them the reflection still take place at each interface of this high low high low high low kind of you know refractive index modulation but all this uh, reflected lights are basically not in phase so when they are out of phase they basically cancel out each other right so this non bragg wavelengths do not experience significant uh, reflection and are typically they are transmitted through the grating so, as I mentioned, what is the formula that determines the Bragg wavelength? It is basically given by lambda b equals to an effective lambda. So, one new term come here is uh, an effective. So, an effective gives you the effective refractive index of the fiber core and uh, capital lambda is basically the period of the refractive index modulation. Okay? Let us now look into different types of fiber break grating. Okay? So, fiber break grating basically can be categorized based on the characteristics of their periodic modulation and their orientation relative to the fibers core axis. So, the first one that will come to your mind is simple break grating. So, basically these are uniform fiber break grating. So, you have a uniform periodic modulation of the refractive index along the fibers core. Okay? So, that runs through the length of the fiber whatever distance you require. So, the grating is basically uniform. So, this is ideal for applications uh, requiring stable and consistent reflection over a single and specific wavelength. So, this is the particular application area of the simple Bragg grating. You use this for you know stable and consistent reflection at specific wavelength. The next one is tilted or you can say blazed fiber break grating. So, here the gratings are basically angled or tilted with respect to the fiber core axis as you can see in the diagram. So, this configuration enhances the coupling of light from the core into the cladding modes. Okay? So, these are basically uh, useful in various filtering or sensing kind of application. So, here the interaction with the you know cladding will be more. Then you have chirped Bragg grating. So, in this particular grating the periodic modulation varies along the length of the fiber. So, you see the periodicity is basically changing. right? So, they are basically used for dispersion compensation in optical fibers because they can reflect different wavelengths at different position along the grating. So, they are able to manage you know the problem of uh, pulse broadening that is typically seen in fiber optic communication. Another type of fiber break grating is superstructure fiber break grating. So, you can see this is a superstructure which is repeated periodically. So, these are basically consist of multiple break gratings of different periodicities which are basically superimposed on each other. Right? So, these are useful in complex filtering tasks and for creating advanced sensor arrays that can detect uh, multiple environmental variables simultaneously. So, this is where the superstructure fiber break grating will be useful. So, one grating will cater to one particular variable, another grating can cater to another particular another variable, but they are basically superimposed to give them this kind of multifunctional the, to make them multifunctional, right. So, break gratings um, are easy to integrate as well. So, fiber components like gratings and couplers can be easily spliced to transmission fibers and other fiber components and uh, they typically exhibit very low insertion loss as compared to planar waveguide and or uh, micro optic components. Um, so, they basically simplify the connection to external devices. 
okay so this break grating nano imprinted on optical fibers have uh, become essential for flattening the gain of uh, amplifiers stabilizing the wavelength of pumps or sources and also for fiber lasers so advantages are basically as i mentioned low insertion loss low polarization sensitivity which we'll see uh, right now the polarization characteristics and also extreme flexibility in designing so these advantages uh, basically uh, make gratings very attractive uh, candidates for applications of complex filtering or precise uh, chromatic dispersion composition now talking about their polarization characteristics as i was mentioning that you know generally they display low polarization sensitivity that means it will ensure the performance consistency however you can still design them for uh, particular polarization and make them polarization sensitive if your application demands so okay so that will actually offer your control uh, over the polarization of light for a specific application talking about robustness and durability the encapsulation of light within the fibers make these components robust and uh, relatively immune to mechanical disturbances uh, their in fiber design uh, shields them for and from environmental factors that might have affected you know other types of optical components so these are some kind of you know important features of fiber break grating which are popularly used in optical communications they also offer customization and rapid manufacturing so fiber components are customizable and can be designed and manufactured quickly compared to other technologies enabling rapid prototyping and deployment in field and the applications in optical communications include you know uh, different usage so mainly the photo induced in fiber break gratings that is if bgs in short they offer great flexibility and high spectral efficiency making them you know versatile for various usage something like you know gain equalizers in edfs which are erbium doped fiber amplifiers which are basically inline fiber amplifiers for boosting up the signal if there is propagation delay after you know the fiber uh, is laid for a couple of kilometers there will be drop in the signal so you require amplifier to boost up the signal but then you know the amplifiers may have those gain ripples it means the uh, gain may not be flat so you can use edfs to smooth out those gain uh, ripples and that will actually enhance the performance of the amplifier you can make them serve as uh, laser diode pump stabilizers at uh, wavelengths like 1480 and 980 which are critical for maintaining uh, stable operation in laser systems so this uh, photo induced in fiber uh, break gratings are basically optical elements which are fabricated within the optical fiber using light so typically you use ultraviolet light and um, you use a mask to cover the core and then shine uv light through that mask to selectively cure some portion of the core and that will induce changes in the refractive index periodically and that is how you make the fiber break grating this technology harnesses the principle of uh, break refraction uh, allowing for the reflection of specific wavelength of light while transmitting the remaining band okay so that way you know this uh, in fiber break gratings or ifbgs they become integral component of various optical applications now how do you use them as uh, sensors because this kind of uh, break grating in fiber break grating they have shown sensitivity to changes in temperature strain pressure because they can all alter the break wavelength 
that is you know that particular wavelength which is getting reflected from the grating can change if there is a change in temperature strain or pressure which is applied onto your grating. So, this sensitivity makes them invaluable for the sensor technology where you know this kind of break gratings can be used for monitoring structural health for say dam then bridges even you can use them for security for making fences in the border areas where you know you can detect any kind of intrusion if somebody steps on your fiber which is buried in the soil okay there will be change in the refractive index because of the stress being applied and that will change the wavelength which is typically reflected from that grating um, in an unstretched condition and that can be easily detected. So, this kind of uh, technology are being applied by uh, border security forces to you know fence or protect the borders of territories. All right. And um, you can also measure uh, physical forces in engineering and other medical applications. They are also useful in telecommunications where you know this kind of uh, in fiber break gratings serve as filters or wavelength selective reflectors improving the signal quality and managing channel distribution in dense wavelength division multiplexing systems. Okay. So, one of the primary benefits that we can see in integrating uh, in fiber break grating is their ability to be integrated you know directly into the fiber without needing any bulky external component and this integration has allowed them uh, to provide a compact efficient design which are less susceptible to mechanical uh, failure and environmental disturbances. So, now let us look into you know filtering and multiplexing kind of application. So, wavelength selective filtering can be achieved okay, where the reflection coefficient of this grating is directly proportional to the Fourier transform of the photo induced index variation uh, profile. Okay. So, you can also make it customizable. Okay, that your filtering response can be customized. So, the spectral characteristics of the grating can be precisely tailored by adjusting the period and the photo induced uh, refractive index variation. So, this allows for high rejection of uh, adjacent channels and creating filters with uh, rectangular shapes, multiple peaks and other desired spectral profiles. They are also useful in advanced applications in WDM systems. So, modern IFBGs writing techniques combined with sophisticated inverse modeling allows for the creation of almost any desired spectral shape which are crucial for WDM systems that needs uh, complex yet cost effective filters. So, some example could be low channel spacing filters with features like you know rectangular shapes and uh, zero in band dispersion for applications like pulse reshaping. So, here are some you know applications shown with integration um, for integration with circulators. So, to extract uh, specific signals close to the Bragg wavelength, straight short period grating are typically used in conjunction with a circulator. So, here you can see that uh, circulator the signal can go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 like that. Okay, it cannot go back. Okay. So, here you can see in the first case it, it is basically a pass band filter okay. and um, uh, it is a break rating that basically reflects uh, lambda 2. So, what is happening you are uh, sending a light that has got lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and lambda 4 all this four wavelengths and then when it goes here okay lambda 2 is reflected so the remaining passes through so lambda 1 lambda 3 and lambda 4 passes through but lambda 2 is taken out or dropped from this particular port so you can also uh, use another circulator here 
okay something like this okay say you have lambda 1 lambda 3 and lambda 4 okay and then you you have one circulator so the signal just goes in here but this one reflects lambda 2 so all the signal will simply pass through and then if you put lambda 2 through this port what will happen it goes in okay gets reflected back and will get connected and all the signals will get come come out of the circulator so what is happening here you are adding lambda 2 into your stream so this can actually act as add and drop multiplexer right so that is how you actually transform this thing into a add and drop multiplexer um, so they basically use circulator and fiber break rating for selective dropping or adding of you know uh, channels in optical communication systems okay you can also use you know all fiber devices something like you know that's an alternative uh, like maxender interferometer and a you know 100 percent or zero percent coupler that you can see here so that these are basically you know offering low cost solution so the first figure actually shows two identical uh, break rating both reflecting lambda 2 are photo written at the two arms of the interferometer okay so here what happens the function extraction of lambda 2 is represented right so this is again uh, this is the in port so lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 comes here and lambda 2 is extracted okay so what comes out is basically lambda 1 lambda 3 and lambda 4 okay and you can see here as well so lambda 1 lambda 3 and lambda 4 are entering this this particular uh, port and here is a break rating so from this port if you add lambda 2 it will get reflected and come back through this port where you will have all the wavelengths added up so again these are actually making you know um, optical add drop uh, multiplexer and this one is based on 0% coupler okay you can also use them for compensation of chromatic dispersion in a wide band and tunable fashion right so in optical fibers what what is this uh, chromatic dispersion impact in optical fibers different frequencies of a pulse propagate at a different speed due to chromatic dispersion and uh, because of that you know the pulse gets broadened and this broadening will cause pulses to overlap and there will be loss of signal right and that will affect the data transmission especially at high data rates where the pulses are naturally short and they are spectrally broader so you need to find a method to you know compensate the dispersion and uh, typically what people do you know to compensate uh, this chromatic dispersion highly negative dispersion fibers uh, typically say 11, 17 picosecond per nanometer per kilometer is attached to the fiber optical link okay and this is the value of chromatic dispersion at 1550 right so you have to typically use 20 kilometers of this kind of fiber for every 100 kilometer of transmission fiber okay and you can see that significantly increases the system volume now what is the challenge with this kind of dispersion compensating fiber this compensating fibers not only require very long length but also they suffer from high attenuation so they typically have larger attenuation than a standard transmission fiber so they have 0.5 db per kilometer attenuation as compared to 0.2 db per kilometer attenuation for standard transmission fiber so they are also more susceptible to nonlinear effects and they will require additional amplifiers to compensate for this loss of signal so it's a complicated one so why not you use a chirped fiber break rating to do this kind of dispersion compensation so you can actually use linearly chipped uh, uh, grating that can be used okay so what happens here so these gratings used in reflection with a circulator the, it can reflect longer wavelengths immediately and shorter wavelengths 
can travel further and then get reflected. So that way, you know, it can actually, um, you know, the, the wavelength which is lagging behind can be pushed forward and the wavelength which was leading can be pulled back and then you can actually gain the shape of the pulse back. So they effectively introduce a time delay and compensate for the, you know, dispersion with a lower loss reduced volume and decreased sensitivity to nonlinear effects. So, these are basically, you know, win-win for from all direction. So, if you look into the equation that dispersion compensation that is introduced by a grating based compensator can be written as 2n effective L divided by C delta lambda. So, typically it comes out to be, you know, 10 L in uh, millimeter divided by delta lambda which is in nanometer and this whole thing dispersion compensation as you can see it is picosecond per nanometer right. So, what is L here? L, L is the grating length, L is the wavelength variation both influencing the dispersion characteristic and you, you can see N effective is basically the effective reflective index of the core mode inside the fiber right. So, effective use, so a grating shorter than you know 100 millimeter can effectively compensate for the dispersion that has happened over a 100 kilometer long transmission fiber for a single wavelength channel. So, you can understand previously for every 100 kilometer you have to use 20 kilometer long dispersion compensating fiber, but here you just require a grating which is 100 millimeter. Okay. Okay, so it's like very very small. So that is how you can actually use this kind of system for dense WDM system as well, where multiple gratings can be uh, needed or concatenated for different channels, right? Now there are some challenges with wide spectral bands. So for broader spectral ranges like the entire EDFA, which is Airbnb doped fiber amplifier that covers uh, pass band about 30 nanometer okay you have to significantly go for you have to go for a significantly longer grating something like up to 5 meters okay and these such devices need to compensate for both first and second order uh, chromatic dispersion and typically they use quadratically chirped uh, gratings but still it is fine it's just 5 meters that you will require okay so, the advanced fabrication techniques actually help create these precise gratings, okay, which employ um, interferometrically controlled setups using, you know, photo inscription, right. That is the method of creating, uh, you know, the gratings in the fiber core. So, what are the challenges here? The challenges, however, is the low reproducibility and high group delay ripple that still exist in gratings which are longer than 1 meter, right. So, these are couple of challenges that are still there and that is why research is still ongoing. And uh, their application in high data rate system, something like, you know, greater than 10 Gbps where precise compensation is very critical short gratings under 100 millimeter can be tuned by adjusting the chirp to account for the temperature induced or strain induced wavelength shifts and that will ensure continuous and precise dispersion management throughout the fiber. Let us now look into applications in laser diodes. So, laser diodes with uh, fiber grate, break grating for uh, wavelength control of the laser emission can be seen here, okay. And um, this has brought renewed interest in this in fiber break gratings. So, the technique of photo inscribing of uh, fiber break gratings in the peak tail of uh, laser diodes for wavelength selection within the diodes uh, gain bandwidth is gaining much more attention because it is a cost effective solution for WDM sources, okay. So, here you can see that uh, this is the uh, break rating that is part of this uh, monomode fiber 
within this laser diode okay and uh, this shows the laser mode and these are the febriparo cavity modes right so they actually have uh, this plug and play concept so this uh, in fiber break gratings enable plug and play approach where the diode chip and the grating are packaged together so wavelength selection is simplified by switching out of the grating uh, allowing the same diode laser to be used for different configurations right so you can actually um, using the grating you can actually um, change the wavelength that is coming out of your chip so these two are anti reflection coating and this is the uh, break grating so com filters are particularly interesting for creating multi wavelength or tunable light sources as you can see here these are you know spectral response of a comb filter these are very high reflections so here the peaks are basically spaced by 200 gigahertz only so these filters allow for uh, precise selection and tuning of multiple wavelengths simultaneously that enhances the functionality of wdm systems you can also see the application of uh, gratings fiber break gratings in fiber lasers so where they can provide optimal solution so the photo inscription that we do in fiber break grating is considered to be the best method for closing the cavity of rare earth doped fiber lasers that ensures you know efficient and integrated mirror functionality with minimal loss these gratings can be directly written on the doped fiber or in a pigtail fiber that can be spliced to it okay splice means that that it, that can be easily connected to it okay this allows for the production of lasers emitting at uh, various wavelengths by selecting appropriate dopant and grating wavelengths such as you know 1.5 micrometer with erbium and 1.3 micrometer with thulium you can also uh, see that you know recently there has been a strong interest in the lasers based on the raman effect as you can see in this figure so this is the raman fiber laser operating at 1480 nanometer that uses break grating in cascade so you see these are all different you know photo imprinted break grating and this is an rbm doped fiber okay so this laser actually uses the cavities that are tens of meters long and uh, closed by pairs of mirrors so the mirrors are basically the Bragg mirrors here that uh, reflect strongly at specific Stokes wavelength which are 13.2 terahertz apart and they are basically transparent to all other wavelength so what is the advantage of using in fiber Bragg grating here so these gratings are ideal for fiber lasers due to their ability to be finely tuned using temperature or mechanical deformation so that can give you this kind of you know fine stokes wavelength alignment to give you the raman laser so this allows for continuous tunability and possibility of creating multi wavelength lasers by associating several pairs of gratings as you can see at different wavelengths you can also use them as comb filters for broader wavelength coverage or tunability multiple gratings can be replaced by a comb filter right that enhances the versatility and the functionality of the laser system you can also use fiber break grating as amplifiers or sorry in amplifiers and uh, where they are used they are basically used for gain flattening in edfs as i mentioned that uh, you know the gain spectrum will have ripples and you can use this in fiber break gratings to cancel out those ripples and that flat gain pattern will be very useful for wdm system so insertion of an optical filter whose spectrum basically matches the inverse of the edfa gain ripple will be able to cancel out and this unique solution has got this application of gain flattening and uh, as you understood that you know in 
fiber break gratings can be seamlessly spliced to the RBM dot fiber and customized to match any specific gain ripple characteristics that basically enhances the system efficiency and adaptability. So there is a lot of scope of customization and thus it has got more implementation. What are the challenges? The standard st short period grating used for uh, gain equalization must often be period, uh, paired with an isolator. So that will basically needed to suppress the back reflection into the amplifier. And uh, you, alternative gratings such as slanted you know, um, or blazed short wave gratings and long, long period gratings uh, can help overcome this kind of back reflection that may go into the amplifier. So you, you need an isolator in this case, but if you use this kind of slanted gratings, you can get rid of the isolator requirement. The slanted short period gratings have been developed to create smooth envelopes in the coupling into cladding modes. So these are the advanced gratings that people are designing because they are designed to produce minimal back reflection and uh, tailored spectral response for optimal gain flattening uh, across a wide bandwidth. Okay? So here the getting the reflection is not the main purpose. Here the grating's main job is to cancel out the ripples in the gain spectrum and that is why you know this kind of field uh, in fiber break ratings are very much in demand. If you think about you know the long period gratings, they also offer negligible back reflection and they have the ability to tailor spectral shapes within the adjustment in the grating index profile and modulation. Their sensitivity to the environmental changes can be thus utilized to dynamically adjust the filters spectral shape making them valuable as dynamic gain equalizers in advanced optical systems. Long period grating sensitivity to the surrounding media uh, mediums refractive index can also be exploited by using external command some such as you know electromagnetic adjustments to filter uh, to modify the filter spectral response for precise control over the system's performance. And what is the association with optical devices? So you can see that fiber break gratings are extensively used alongside fiber lasers, fiber amplifiers and laser diodes for enhancing their performance and efficiency okay, in telecommunication systems. So they are very much easy to associate with the traditional optical devices. And the great design flexibility of these fiber break gratings allows for customized application which can be tailored for specific needs, something like you know residual gain equalization or chromatic uh, dispersion compensation in optical networks of today. They also offer high spectral efficiency because these FPGs, uh, FBGs are almost uniquely suited for systems with the very low channel spacing due to their high spectral efficiency because the channels are very close to each other so you are using almost the entire spectrum very efficiently so making you know um, you know because fbgs are very useful in this kind of low spacing scenarios so they are indispensable in dense wdm systems for future high capacity telecommunication systems in fiber break gratings are crucial for dynamic uh, control tasks like you know tunable chromatic dispersion and dynamic gain equalization that allows for adaptive and responsive system performance. Now we will look into the application of fiber break gratings as sensors. The first one is the temperature sensor. So here is the sensor construction. So optical source to transducer connection. So you can see the sensor architecture includes an optical source that basically sends light through a fiber optic cable to the transducer which is sensitive to the optical element that responds to the you know, uh, external changes. 
so there will be some um, detector that changes that detects the change in the optical signal and then you have an actuation circuitry that generates the reading so the variation in the measure end cause the transducer to modify the characteristics of the initial optical signal and this modified signal is basically picked up by the detector processed by the actuation circuitry that which compares with the reference signal to find out how much is the actual measure end that has uh, created this shift in the optical signal. So, how it works you can see that you know the fiber break gratings uh, can be adapted as sensing element to measure temperature, pressure, strain, vibration, inclination, load and displacement and what happens the break grating reflection under the perturbation of any of this will shift the reflection wavelength okay and you have to measure the reflectivity response shift and that needs to be calibrated with the shift in the you know physical parameter that has uh, changed the property of the grating. So, as I mentioned a variation in the environmental parameter for instance temperature and strain will influence both the pitch that is the periodicity and the refractive index of the grating layers and it will perturb the spectral property as you can see here. So, such perturbation in the spectrum is commonly utilized for sensing applications where lambda b if you remember it is written as 2 ineffective lambda. So, now you will have a change in this lambda b so that you can actually obtain uh, as a function of change in this effective refractive index due to change in length that will be covering the strain and also the change with temperature. So, the first term here tells you about the uh, effect of strain and uh, the second term here tells you about the effect of change in temperature delta T right. So, if you only consider uh, the temperature dependence of the break wavelength, so this is it ok. So, only the second term tells you about the uh, temperature uh, dependence. So, here you can see dou n effective by dou T that is basically the thermo optic coefficient. So, F FBG technology is promising for future sensor applications by detecting shift in Bragg wavelength to measure temperatures and strain effects inside the uh, fiber core. So, initial application of this technology uh, is in mainly measuring temperature and uh, strain sensing and uh, they, they are very much you know giving practical solutions and very effective. So, they are also uh, used in field applications and these FBG sensors they also facilitate distributed measurements through wavelength division multiplexing. So, that allows them for you know large scale monitoring across various environment. So, it, 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 it makes you it makes it easy for you to cover a large area and then do a lot of monitoring using this kind of sensors. Now, why they are suitable in challenging environment due to their immunity to electromagnetic interference and explosion proof characteristics because of the you know uh, fiber optic uh, cables jacket layer ok. So, this kind of sensors are basically uh, suited for petrochemical plants power electronics ok where you know the traditional uh, or you know conventional sensors like thermocouples can be easily replaced. And uh, the sensitivity of this fiber break rating to temperature changes also make them ideal for precise temperature monitoring um, something like you know environmental monitoring applications and so on. They are also very effective as strain sensor. So, strain is described to a tensor that involves normal and shear components. The normal component typically accounts for you know stretching or compression along a materials line elements where the shear component basically involves you know sliding of the layers within the material. Now, based on that the types of normal strain would be you know 
tensile strain so that basically occurs when the length of a body increases and compressive strain occurs when there is compression or the length of the body decreases now the engineer engineering strain which is uh, also known as nominal strain uh, can be expressed as the ratio of the total deformation to the initial state that is epsilon can be written as delta L over L. So, delta L is basically the change in length. Now, fiber optic strain measurement, uh, how you do it? In fiber optics, strain is also measured as the ratio of total wavelength shift divided by the initial wavelength and you link it to the photoelastic coefficient for a single mode fiber and there the relationship will be like this delta lambda by lambda equals 0 0.79 delta L by L. So, you can actually directly correlate the st strain with change in the wavelength. So, that is how you do the measurement. So, here you can see single point sensors. So, these are basically you know, uh, sensors are compact, durable and highly precise and they are typically connected to a high bandwidth optical fiber cable and they are ideal for monitoring of uh, a specific point on a structure okay you can also have quasi distributed like this okay so by multiplexing a sing single point sensors and places placing them at different strategic location along the fiber you can actually build a quasi distributed measurement system okay so it is basically giving you localized strain data over several points and then you can also make you know fiber optic cable itself as uh, a distributed sensor that makes uh, continuous uh, measurement across the entire length of the structure as you can see in this particular figure so this is single point sensor this is quasi distributed sensors and this is distributed sensors so the fiber break rating st strain sensors they belong to the category as we mentioned uh, of single point sensors and uh, noted for their small size durability and high accuracy there are different geometries which are typically used for single point sensors as you can see the first one is uh, heterocore fiber structure taper structure uh, fbgs then you can also have through cladding removal micro bending or macro bending right so fbgs are typically fabricated using uh, micro fabrication techniques that are able to create refractive index modulation along the beam propagation direction so other other types of uh, this is so this is standard refractive index modulation so other than that you know fbgs can also uh, be realized using various structures as i mentioned here this heterocore fiber then taper kind of structure cladding removal and micro and macro bendings so again um, here you can see that this is the Bragg wavelength, this is the Bragg condition. So, if you can consider the change in the Bragg wavelength, you will see the first term actually tells you about the strain sensor. Okay? So, this actually gives you the change in the Bragg wavelength due to strain. Okay? So, you can actually calculate delta lambda that is you know uh, the shift in Bragg wavelength as a function of the material property so you can put in pij which is basically the pockels coefficient okay um, that is coming from the stress optic sensors and new here is the poison ratio of that particular material so the applied strain epsilon can be derived through measuring delta lambda b okay so final expression can be written as delta lambda b over delta over lambda b is 1 minus p e times epsilon okay so here p is basically the elastic optic coefficient and that links your delta lambda by lambda with delta l by l 
and the relationship for that uh, single mode fiber is typically like this it's delta lambda by lambda equals 0 0.79 delta l by l right so that is how you can actually uh, measure strain so one important thing to note here is that you have this term dou n effective by dou l that is basically the variation of the effective refractive index which is induced because of the strain okay and what is this one dou capital gamma by uh, dou l that is basically the change in the pitch of your grating because of the strain so all these things actually give you this change in the break reflection so that is all for this lecture on applications of fiber break grating so if you have got any doubt regarding this lecture you can drop an email to this particular email address mentioning MOOC photonic crystal and the lecture number on the subject right thank you mm -hmm.